from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Cloud Foundry Summit 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of Cloud Foundry Summit 2018 in Boston, Massachusetts. Happy to welcome to the program another one of the keynote speakers uh, here at the show, Johan Den Haan, who is the CTO of Mendix, uh, company that handles, is in the low code space, uh, had a nice demo they did yesterday. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, great, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, Johan, first of all, tell us a little bit about your background, the company. Uh, we're here in Boston, there's connections to Boston for the company. Uh, definitely, our headquarters is, uh, is here in Boston. Yeah. Um, so if you look at Mendix as a company, so we, we founded the company um, a while back um, for the sole reason of to solve the problem that application development in enterprise is still, still very hard and error prone. I mean, I don't know if you, uh, you, if you think about the statistics around enterprise software development, I think still most of the projects just fail because it's not fast enough, not aligned with the business, things like that. So what we do as a company is help other companies uh, yeah, thrive in a software driven world to make sure that they can um, uh, build software from initial idea to a working application uh, with speed, so as quickly as possible, uh, in collaboration, because if you build something, you want to involve business people, NIT people, and let them collaborate on creating the right software solution, but also in control, because we're doing it for an enterprise, so you want to make sure you can control the entire process and do it uh, in a way that uh, that helps enterprises. All right, so, so uh, Johan, I think back to, you know, times in my career, when you talk about kind of a software rollout, it's like, oh, we're going to do this big initiative, let's bring in the consultants, we're going to spend 12 to 18 months, which turns into 24 months, and we're going to spend a ton of money, and we're going to bring this application that's, you know, for the enterprise and going to do things great. Uh, now I talk to some companies and they're like, oh, hey, I'm doing my ERP rollout. I thought it was going to take me six months, I did it in three months because I spun it up in the cloud. Um, that, that's kind of the infrastructure piece, but from the application side, you know, there's this trend, we, Mendix, I, I see low code in there. Maybe, I, I think some people hear it, there's low code, some, there's a more controversial term, no code out there. What, what does this really mean? Because at the end of the day, you know, I still have my application, I have my data, you know, what am I building or am I just taking components? Um, you know, help, help us understand this, this, this trend and how it fits for Mendix a little now bit. Maybe start with the infrastructure side as you, yeah. you started there. Yeah. Um, if you look at infrastructure, what we've done there is basically abstraction and automation. Uh, we, we moved up in the stack yeah. and then automated all the things underneath, uh, which is valuable, but it's only a small piece of the application lifecycle. Right. And if you think about delivering an entire application, it's much more than that. And then in the development part of the lifecycle, you can do the same thing. You can also do abstraction and automation, because if you think about um, applications, then a lot of the elements uh, are the same across applications. If you think about an information system, yeah, you need to have data, a UI, logic, of course, and the basics. And what you can do is abstract away to a, a higher level, visual, maybe a visual level, that's what Mendix does, having visual models to define your data, your logic, the business processes, um, as well as the uh, UI, dragging and dropping widgets, creating uh, the user interfaces across channels, so mobile, uh, web. Um, and then turn these models into a working application automatically. But you don't have to worry about all the technical details, like if I hit this button in my UI, will it actually properly call my backend and trigger an action and store something in the database? These are all things that can be automated. Uh, that's not what you what the difference is across different applications. All right, Johan, how does this relate to kind of microservices architectures? Now that's that's a good question because. In a lot of cases, if you hear people talk about low code or it's basically came from the whole model driven development movement, um, then people think that using visual models you abstract from detail so you, you have less control. So you can only build simple toy applications. Uh, but that's not where we, uh, where we are nowadays. This is really a next generation of using models to drive software development where you can have uh, complex applications with the underlying architecture uh, to your needs. So instead of targeting a simple uh, client-server application, we target uh, a microservices architecture. So you, you can quickly build these different microservices, easily reuse data across these services, but all in a visual way. So instead of having to be an architect and building all the cloud-native elements in your microservices, 
you can just focus on the business functionality. And if you hit the button, it will generate this cloud native microservice for you that can scale on, as we are on Cloud Foundry Summit, on Cloud Foundry, yeah. for example. Great, maybe it might help if you kind of walk, walk us through, you know, I, I know it's tough to say a typical customer, maybe give me a customer example or two as to kind of the problem they were having uh, and, and how this helped them uh, you know, move faster, I'm assuming it's part of the out, out, outcome that they're looking for. Yeah, so let, let's start with a, a small example. So just to, to go through the, to the, the, the all the steps of, of creating an application. So we, um, one of our customers is this airline company, and um, one of the, they had a, an issue with productivity because I mean the main thing for them is if you maintain an airplane to get it back in the air as soon as possible because if it's on the ground it costs you money and if it's up in the air it can bring you money right. So um, one of the mechanics in this company came up with like an idea for an application that could help him be much more productive. And that's, I think, also a core element of a low-code platform, is that this collaboration uh, that we bring uh, with the Mendix uh, application platform is that you can involve these people in actually being part of the application delivery team. So this mechanic teamed up with somebody who knew Mendix and said, well, my main problem is where I lose time is that I don't know where my equipment is because you have these large areas where they maintain this pla these planes. And yeah, you have all these things, specific equipment that you need for different parts of maintenance. Um, so the very simple thing they did is what they tagged the equipment uh, with uh, IoT beacons, and then they built a simple app that listens to all the locations, projected it on, on the screen. So what they did was build a simple data model. So added some entities visually, like I have my equipment and it's, uh, there's a location to it, um, and I build a UI on top of that. So. Um, drag and drop some widgets, so a Google Maps widget to visualize the location, um, and then some logic uh, that if uh, if you hit a button, you want to look up an equipment or you want to say uh, you're using it so that somebody else knows that and things like that. So ju in just six days, they have gone through this entire process, iterating quickly, and then they had the app, and it saved them, uh, I think on average, half an hour per day per mechanic. So if you have a couple of hundred of mechanics, yeah that's some real money on the table with just six days of development. But the key is that it's not somebody in the head office thought about how to solve the issue of maintainability, maintainability um, uh, and the efficiency, but it was just somebody on the floor came up with a creative idea and had the tools to quickly experiment and get us into production. Great, so we're here at the Cloud Foundry Summit. Can you explain how Mendix fits with Cloud Foundry, and then you know what, what other solutions do you have out there? Because it, it's it's a big, you know, Cloud Native is a rather big environment these days. So yeah, so if you if you look back, Mendix joined the Cloud Foundry Foundation as one of the uh, early movers, um, and the reason for that is that um, when you start to look at this application lifecycle and make that have a speed collaboration and control do that fast, then you start with development, but that's also just one piece. So. In the early days, we had a customer that, that has, was building a workflow uh, um, application, so uh, automating a certain workflow for publishing magazines. Um, and they were struggling in .NET for six months already. And they didn't have any tangible thing yet. So we came in, well, we were an early startup, so it's via relation, so they were like, oh, you can try it. Um, so six weeks later, we had this entire workflow automated. And then they said, well, you have to, we have to take this in production because this will save us money on a daily basis. And then, okay, go talk with IT. And they said, well, Mendix, we don't know what this is. And uh, by the way, how do we run this? And, and, and we need to order hardware. And that was the moment that we realized it's not just about development. It's about the delivery of the entire application. So we started to, um, it was called cloud then. It was back in uh, 2007, I think, when we, uh, we had this. Um, so we started to host applications, so it made, made that do the same thing there, so one-click deployments to solve that issue as well, because you have the same thing that you have, you need expertise uh, to, uh, to run applications, but instead of that, we abstract away from the details and we just run it in the cloud. Um, and then in 2014, I think Cloud Foundry uh, came up and we realized oh, we should replace our homegrown uh, pass layer that we created with an open source uh, uh, foundation so that we are completely portable because we, we want to offer our uh, customers the freedom to deploy anywhere, whether it's on their private cloud running on one of the distributions of Cloud Foundry 
on the IBM cloud, the SAP cloud. Um, but I think it's a really yeah, happy marriage be between Mendix, which is completely complementary to Cloud Foundry, but both with the same philosophy about automating things, abstracting away from the details and making it much more productive um, to develop application on the one hand, but also to deploy and operate them. Yeah, it, it sounds like a good a good fit for Cloud Foundry to handle certain things, you know, lower level in the stack and while, while you're handling up a level in, in the stack. Is it only Cloud Foundry, is Mendix supported on just other cloud solutions or, uh, you know, yeah, so beyond I, Cloud Foundry? No, our strategy uh, is to be completely uh, agnostic to underlying infrastructure, so we uh, also run on uh, on any Docker-based system, so Kubernetes, uh, but also uh, ECS from Amazon, for example. Um, so yeah, wherever we can run a Docker container, you can run Mendix and we can scale out uh, because of our cloud-native architecture. Yeah. You, who's the typical person that your, your company is working with? Is it, is it the developer side? I'm just curious the business, because it's always, well, developers oftentimes do things but don't have the budget for them, and you mentioned some of the developer operator uh, challenges, so I'm, I'm curious the Mendix's dynamic uh, with, with, with companies. Uh, this, that's um, a great question, because it's, um, if you look at the developer landscape, it's kind of widening, because it's, you don't have just a professional developer that is able to build software, but with low code, you have yeah, more business oriented people that can uh, join these teams as well. So if you look at a typical uh, team that's building applications using the Mendix platform, um, I, I would call them biz DevOps teams. Uh, you have DevOps joining operation development, but this is also joining the business into this same cross-functional team. So a typical team uh, uh, building software using Mendix is like, uh, if you have five people in a team, you often have one professional developer, but four people with a business background. They are tech savvy. They are, have, maybe have a background in as a BI consultant or an SAP consultant or these kind of uh, roles, um, but they don't have a computer science background, but they are involved in building the software. And the great advantage, of course, is that they are domain experts in the area they are building the software for. So you can be really uh, enabling the business and, and bringing value to the business. Okay. Johan, last question, could you just, the, the company itself, how many employees, how many customers, uh, just, just give us kind of a thumbnail of the company. Yeah, so we have around a, a thousand enterprise customers. Um, company size currently is uh, uh, north of 350 people, growing fast. Uh, it's crazy in uh, getting, uh, hiring all the people that we need to, uh, to scale up because the market is really hot. If you look at low code, it's becoming kind of the, I think it's really the next generation of application development becoming um, a mainstream option that any enterprise needs to have to deliver the applications uh, they need. Um, and slightly tied to your previous question, it's also solving the talent gap. And we've seen all these um, uh, rallying cries around everybody needs to learn to, to code to solve the, the, the problem that we need more software than we can build. Um, I think, don't think that is the solution. We will never have so many people that, that uh, can develop software. We need, to, we need a paradigm shift. And that paradigm shift will enable us to build software faster, so 10 times faster than you're used to with traditional programming languages, but also with a much broader group of people, uh, more business-oriented people. So the group of people that can use a low-code platform is minimally 10 times bigger than the professional developer group. And that's what we need to solve this uh, problem in, in our in the software-driven world that we live in. Johan Den Haan, CTO of Mendix, thanks so much for joining me. I'm Stu Miniman, this is theCUBE, Cloud Foundry Summit 2018.